My name is Majegs, and I recommend video games for busy people so that you can spend your small amounts of free time playing games you enjoy, not searching for something that fits your life. In this video, I'm recommending Adam Zombie Smasher for anyone who likes urban chaos, zombie hunting, or cosplaying as a disaster response coordinator. Throw your mind back to 2011, a year with no worries, or if you were a conspiracy theorist, a year before the end of the world. The third Humble Bundle is partway through when an indie zombie game gets added. One more zombie game for the pile, right? Wrong. Adam Zombie Smasher showed the nascent to PC gaming majegs that there was still a little bit of cleverness left to squeeze out of the genre. You see, the massive metropolis of Nuevos Aires is suffering a zombie outbreak, and you just happen to be the disaster response coordinator. You'll manage a roster of mercenary organizations as you fly from neighborhood to neighborhood, evacuating civilians and eradicating the infected. Fighting back against the overwhelming hordes isn't easy, and you'll need to pick your battles wisely as the odds slowly stack against you. Back in 2011, this game felt so unique, and I picked it up again recently and found that it still holds its charm. Just before sitting down to write the script, I played through an entire campaign, and it took me all of an hour. With its procedural generation, randomly assigned mercenary groups, and a slew of modifiers that can change the roadmap of the game, the replayability is substantial, and time commitment is minimal. With a few other busy people-friendly features, Adam Zombie Smasher, despite its age, still earns a recommendation in the Games for Busy People annals. Now let's start with the logistical details. Adam Zombie Smasher is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux for a whopping price of $10. A full campaign for a new player is probably around 4 hours with each subsequent campaign sharing the mechanics but introducing a number of randomly generated elements and procedural maps. I personally wouldn't bet on it coming out for Switch or iOS, but that's just my opinion. Now, onto the game itself. Adam Zombie Smasher campaigns take place at a strategic level and at a tactical level. At the strategic level, you select a neighborhood to execute a tactical operation in. After selecting the neighborhood you want to defend that month, you'll be transported to the tactical map. In this view, you'll deploy whichever mercenaries are available to you that month, ranging from underground infantry grunts to building-based snipers to zombie bait and even roadblocks. It's up to you to either hold off the infected while your rescue chopper pulls civilians to safety, or go on the offensive to engage all the shamblers in the area to eradicate the infection once and for all. Following your success, or failure, you'll be awarded experience and victory points that progress you towards the end of the campaign. That's it. A nice, simple gameplay loop that doesn't rely on complexity to be enjoyable, but instead revels in the chaos and swarm theory of zombies in a high population density area. One thing that really resonated with me as a busy person is that you can restart a level with no penalty. Unless you're going for a hardcore campaign like some kind of masochist, that means you can play around with all kinds of layouts until you get it just right. So you don't have to worry about throwing away a whole mission because you had a misinput or messed something up. It encourages you to play in the sandbox of Nuevos Aires and just have fun. As a busy person, it can feel all too hard to come by a design that lets you play that way. But if you're going to lose in this one, it's going to be due to a series of poor decisions, not because you messed up your deployment in one single level. And I really like that. Now, earlier I mentioned I completed a campaign in about an hour ahead of writing this script, and that wasn't a lie, and it wasn't a baby campaign either, it was a standard campaign. But you could compress this game even more by just doing a short campaign. I won't harp on why this is good for busy people, I'll just leave it with one more explicit conclusion. If the total campaign only took me an hour, the meat and potatoes of the game, the tactical city missions, take even less. Probably five minutes total. Enough said. What I enjoy about Adam Zombie Smasher is that I can create my own narrative. As walkers invade the neighborhoods, I found myself telling my own story, how the city responded poorly at first with just a helicopter and some barricades, but eventually they contracted full infantry teams and started bringing artillery units into city blocks. As things become more desperate, demolitions teams and high-caliber military units are required to stem the tide of the biters. It was a fun little exercise in creative writing while I was blowing off some steam, at least. Adam Zombie Smasher might be an older title. It might be missing some of our modern-day PC gaming requirements. But with the worrying pattern of games clawing for $70 and being unfinished and unpolished on release, I can't help but return to some of the classics from Days Gone. It's fun, it's chaotic, and it encourages you to revel in the sandbox that is zombie hunting. For those reasons and more, I'm giving Adam Zombie Smasher 5 Catbird Launches out of 5 Catbird Launches. Highly recommended.